play out early, get some games under their belt, and start practicing. Well, here we go into game number one. Capture the flag on Coliseum. We're going to start things off with SLG, the newest member here on Lucid. You know, he has performed so well in free-for-alls over the years and just awed people with his individual skill. We're going to see if he's going to be able to continue this in this 4v4 team play here with Lucid already picking up an early kill. Yeah, the flag's already been run, but there is a rocket launcher that is covering this flag as well. So you need to be careful if you're SLG, as I think it's going to be a restart there on that game. But, I mean, you were talking about SLG, and you were saying he's the fantastic free-for-all player. We've seen him perform well in those, but in fours as well. I mean, he is a French player. He's not from the United Kingdom like the rest of the lads. He is absolutely phenomenal, and it's amazing to see him now teaming. And We've got this European roster rather than just an English roster. You could say different things about Kimbo as well because he's technically German, technically American. He He's whatever he wants to be. I saw him have an American passport as he came into the country. <laughs> he has both. That's cheating, in my opinion. How is that allowed? Is that, exactly. How is that allowed? It's not allowed, but I, I, I'm excited for this team. Uh, and the main reason why, every time a European team turns up to these events, I go, right, this is it. I think this is the best European team we have to offer. And then they go and make a change. And they make a change again. And we're just trying to find that perfect mesh. Is this going to be that dream team? Is this going to be the team that finally shows what Europe are made of? I don't know. Elevate is going to be a really, really tough competition to begin with. You know, for me, it's tough to see that EU team switch up, especially after placing the highest ever at DreamHack Denver, placing in the top four, and, or sorry, placing in the top six, and just being able to, to mark their place in history, in Halo history, since the beginning of competitive Halo. No EU team has ever done what they did. And now we're seeing, we saw that team completely disband. And now we're gonna see if this team can pick up where that team left off. Do you want me to be honest? I think they get restless. They get back, they have this amazing event, they get back to Europe, and then suddenly there's no competition. There's no one to play against. These North American players that they should be playing against, they don't get the chance to. And it's almost like to get any sort of excitement into their lives, they go, let's make a team change just so we can start learning and playing again. And it's it's amazing. It's always happened in Europe. It's been the same since back in 20, uh, 2005, to be honest, Mike. Yeah, well, this EU team has a ton of individual skill. Well, here we go. Back again, capture the flag on Coliseum. Let's kick things off with SLG one more time here. See what he's gonna do off the start. And interestingly enough, we're gonna see, actually we'll hop on board with two Foxy here, but something, when you replay or restart a game, something that you can go into is you, you can change up that entire beginning strategy just because the other team knows what you're gonna do, especially with how that one started out. Did, did they change anything up? It didn't look like they really changed up too much there, and uh, but we're gonna see if they're gonna be able to continue this. Yeah, most teams usually know how they want to approach the start of the game, and you can see that both teams were very similar in how they approached first the restart and now this game as well. As Sabinator has found himself a sniper rifle, but can't find any shots here. Now, statistically, this is a really good game type for Lucid from their scrims as of late, but a 78% win record. But this is also an okay game for Elevate as well. And you've got to imagine the Elevate are facing off against some of the best teams in the world, like Tox, for example, whereas Lucid haven't had that kind of practice. Well, Sabinator in a perfect position with the sniper rifle. He's got four shots left in the chamber. They're bringing that flag all the way back. Spartan already in the base, and within that, about that first minute, putting that first flag cap on the board. Sabinator hanging back, trying to just peek any player that peeks around the corner here. He's gonna get the no scope. He'll get the finish there. That sniper is empty. Now we're gonna see Three players go down from Lucid. Really smart from Sabinera as well. Just wasting a few bullets just before uh, the player approached him, just in case he lost Look that one. Look at this, though. Look at this. So sneaky. Oh, but Kimbo not able to get, finish that kill. He will get the help of Respectful. So great teamwork on their side. But now Kimbo trying to make a move, going into the base. Can he get that flag? No, there's going to be a player that is going to be sneaking right behind him and will finish him off. That's Sabinator with the double kill. And as that's happening, Spartan's trying to move another flag. And Sabinator is doing so much right now. I mean, flag capture number one was all because he had that sniper rifle and he scared Lucid into not wanting to push out that base. It allowed Spartan to get a pull and just run it freely. And then once again, Spartan is pulling it and Sabinator was getting two massive kills back in the base. He is doing a lot of work right now and there he is on the power up, making sure he gets any sort of weapon. Sabinator taking it slow. He saw L-Town die in the base. So he doesn't want to lose these rockets here. Two rockets in the chamber. Enough to pick up one or two kills. He's going to opt to move back down to bottom middle as he knows he doesn't really have any teammates nearby. Goes for the first rocket, goes for the second. 
he will get the connection on the second, but two players go down from both sides, and we're seeing a bit of a standoff here. Neither team able to get a flag moving once again. And we're seeing both teams kind of trying to figure out how each other are playing here. Trying to sneak in, going from that one side, but it's a ju just a bunch of slays back and forth right now. But we do have Sniper Rifle coming up. I think going down 1-0 is actually a good thing for Lucid. It might open their eyes a little bit and get them to try and approach the game a little bit more aggressively. One thing European teams can struggle with is very passive Halo. Hasn't happened as much in recent uh, recent months with Halo, but certainly is a thing of the past. As now we see this... Oh no, trying to be after that, again. we're seeing a sensitivity change there. We Don't want to see oh, a sensitivity crisis during mid-game, but we'll see if that helps them out. But over on the other side, we've got SLG moving in with their first flag cap. He's going to be able to put that on the board. We are all tied up. That's going to be three down for Elevate. And we're seeing Lucid now start to make a push back towards that 50-yard line. SLG trying to find the player. That did take down two Foxy. He's hiding around here somewhere. That's Falcated with the sniper rifle. Just playing hard to get over here. Just making them really work to get that kill. And it looks like he did throw that sniper off the map as well. But look how good Lucid were in that flag capture. They noticed that Elevate were getting aggressive, they were getting confident, and as soon as Elevate pulled a flag, that's when Lucid suddenly burst out from the holes that they were hiding in, and they caught Elevate on the counter, they caught them off guard, and I love the fact they were able to play that in that kind of style, that kind of counter-attack style that we sometimes see in flag capture. Well, you got SLG giving some great cover fire here, but Kimbo is going to go down, so it doesn't look like they are going to be able to get their hands on the that flag to continue return. that moving across the map. You'll see Elevate get the return. Respectful now moving up. We're seeing Lucid really set up and get ready for those rockets. Respectful misses the first rocket, goes for the second. He'll pick up the kill. That's two down for Elevate. But as there's two down, L-Town, he is moving the flag. He's got a teammate nearby as well, getting this all the way back to his base. He's in the cave, staying alive. Teammates are spawning up. They're coming in to help out. That's going to be two down, though, for Elevate. Can they get this flag back? A lot of defense coming in from Lucid as they grab the flag, and they're moving the flag out. They get the return on top of that. And like you said, maybe it was better for Lucid to go down early because they are already about to cap in flag number two and take the lead. Yeah, as long as they don't choke this flag, as that's Spartan is a chance oh, to no. and he will get a touch as well. They were so close to putting that one in, but there are numbers now. They're off the spawn. That's one, two, three, are down. And just some shots are fired here, there, and everywhere. They're going to go 2-1 up, and Lucid are suddenly back into this game. SLG moving back up to top bridge, trying to get some good lines of sight up there. He'll get spotted, have to back down quickly. Gets down to bottom middle. He will stay alive here. But look at this, Lucid constantly pushing in from that rocket side of the map. Yeah, and Sabernator was in a position to grab those rockets as well. You saw he was contesting with uh, Respectful. Both those players really trying to secure themselves as the dominant member of each team to try and get those power weapons as now we see another push and Sabernator has secured himself a flag grab here, but he is slightly concerned about people spawning behind him. And look at just the, the surge of Lucid players dropping onto that flag, but actually it went against them there because the grenades, they did so much damage. Look at this, L-Town running the flag all the way back. He's no shield. He slips around the corner, and he'll be able to cap the flag with absolutely no health left in his bar. Now moving back over as we're all tied up 2-2. Two two, a sniper rifle could be the game changer here as we're already seeing the flag out for, for Lucid. Can Elevate keep that flag going, though? You see, I believe that flag is going to get touched. They are going to be able to keep it moving, but they got to pick up a few kills. They do, and L-Town is very weak. And notice how respectful jumped out as well. Little awareness as he knew the sniper was coming up. This flag is still moving, and as I say that, and there's a no-scope to finish the game, but Elevate take it 3-2. Lucid did so well to stay in the game, but it was just that sniper rifle right at the end to get those important kills just to have Lucid on the back foot. It was a good effort from the European boys, but they certainly would have wanted a victory to start off there. Well, let me tell you, after watching game number one, these two teams definitely match out pretty even. You know, going down 1-0, going up 2-1, and then Elevate bringing it back to close it out 3-2. And it wasn't, it wasn't back and forth in a sense of these elongated plays. That was very quick flag caps. Those were very quick. We didn't have long standoffs or anything. And look, I guess the, the breaking point in that game was when you saw two members spawning on the elbow just instantly rushing that flag to try and get a return, the Lucid boys. They got hit by grenades, they got taken down, three of three members fell, and then it was two back-to-back -back flag captures because they just weren't able to restabilize themselves off those spawns it's because they were constantly hard. on a random spawn. 
Spartan with 63.2% accuracy. His shots are on point, definitely trying to lead the squad here. I'd say uh, him and L-Town probably have the most experience on the team. L-Town obviously placing second at a Halo World Championship in 2016. And he's been on the grind trying to make his way back to the top. And uh, they're looking pretty good here. Take a look at that gold red pack on your screen. No look gold. Redeem that at halo.gg. Sign into your account and just type that code right in. What are you talking about? Uh, old players, you're talking about experienced players. That is going to matter in the next game in this series, Mike. We have Refuge coming into play. And of course, if you are a Halo fan, you know what Refuge is a remake of. And we're going to see these players. What map is that? What, 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 map, what is map is that? Let us know in the Twitch what chat. What map? I'm not going to say it because I think there's a bet on of who actually calls it that name first live on cast. So I don't want to be the person to actually say that by Let accident. us know what that throwback map is. What, what game is that from? Is that from... A, we can say that. It's, maybe it's from Halo 2. Halo 2. Halo Reach, technically. Mm. It was in there. I'm saying Halo 2. I'm staying out of that. Never been a Reach kid? Halo 2. Halo 2. Okay. Halo but two. I, I'm excited for Refuge. Uh, I mean, I think as everyone is throughout this tournament, the fact that some of the old players are going to get to play on a very familiar map, uh, it's actually one of Lucid's best game types through practices, through 2Ks. They actually have a 100% win record on this map throughout scrims. And yes, okay, I know scrims are just online statistics. And yes, okay, Lucid aren't facing the best opponents in the world in comparison to some of the North American teams. But we can certainly tell by that statistic that they are good at this game time. Kimbo trying to keep his hands warm. It can be a bit chilly in here. You got to keep those hands warm. Got to keep that shot on point. But let's take a look at the series layout here. We just saw CTF Kali as game number one. Like you said, Slayer Refuge is going to be game number two. Strongholds Plaza game number three and Oddball going to be coming up for game number four if we're going to see that. And, you know, we were talking about this, how this kind of, a lot of players think this reminds them of a, like a Guardian. Uh, obviously, this map is symmetrical, but you see a lot of flashy plays here on, uh, on that Oddball map. So, you know, I've, I'm hoping we make it there. I want to see that. Yeah, it's whether we do get there. I mean, and I was talking about statistics on the side of Lucid, I guess for Elevate on the other side is actually one of their worst maps statistically in scrim results. Again, you've got to imagine that they are playing the likes of Tox, the likes of Splice, some of the best teams in the world. And let's be honest, Elevate want to be one of the best teams in the world, so they should be playing against those teams. But they've only played this game six or seven times in scrims, and they've lost every time thus far. So every time. you've got to imagine they're going to try and redeem themselves when we get onto land now. And it is a chance for them to kind of punish European Halo into the ground. I know that American teams do like to beat European teams, don't they, Mike? Yes, they do. Well, Spartan, he's going to be going for that sniper off the beginning of this game. So once we do start this game, would we'll love to watch him off the rip because, you know, he's been kind of leading the squad as well as that power weapon player. And uh, Spartan, he's always had some flashy plays in him throughout the uh, Halo's competitive history. And one of the most exciting things about this map is there are two snipers. We've been calling it for it. We've been waiting for it for ages. We've seen it in other iterations of Halo. We heard Clutch getting excited about it on the desk. We're going to have genuine snipe offs as we get to the end of the game. We could have a 48 to 48 scenario where SLG has a sniper and L Town has a sniper, for example. That's madness. That's what I want to see. I'm excited. And, Let's go. And this map was created by the one and only Pone Jones. So big shout out to him and putting this together uh, in O2, the throwback map. Didn't say. I didn't, didn't say, say I didn't say it. You didn't say it. didn't say it. So there you see it. Sniper rifle respawns every three minutes. Here we go. Kicking off game number two. Elevate leading the series one to zero. And Spartan is headed straight for the sniper. He's going to check across the map here. Check that rock jump up. See if he can spot any players trying to make a push towards ring two. Rockets are down at bottom middle. No player yet to retrieve those. You'll see that green icon letting you know that no player has picked up that power weapon just yet. And it does look like a player was able to just retrieve that. Yeah, L-Town's able to pick it up, but he goes down to respectful. On the other side, Kimbo now has a sniper rifle, and he's hitting shots. I was wondering who on this team was going to grab the sniper. Was it going to be SLG? Was it going to be Kimbo? And it is right to be in the hands of Kimbo, one of the best snipers in Europe when he is on his better day. And look at this lead from Lucid. Already four kills up, and look how aggressive they are trying to hunt these spawns. That's one thing that the old players know very well is where these spawns are going to be happening, where they need to be looking, because Slayer can be difficult on Refuge. You've got to rotate well with the team to make sure you catch players on spawn. 
There you go to Foxy. He's going to drop those rockets for his teammate. Nicely played there. Definitely making it difficult to wield both of those maps here on this map, uh, especially at those long ranges. So two Foxy just trying to stay alive with the sniper, and they're, they'll see in the kill feed. Sabinator, he's picking up a kill with the sniper. He still has five shots left in the chamber. L-Town with a perfect kill off the stream there. And Sabinator just looking around, trying to find anybody. You'll see Elevate, though. They're really kind of contained together. They're a pack moving around the map. You saw most of them, they're over there by Red Courtyard. Well, a pack is the perfect word as Sabinator hits a nice sniper rifle shot, but they wolf packed right onto two Foxy when they knew he was the last man alive to make sure he couldn't get away with that sniper rifle. Give some extra bullets here to Sabinator who is going to jump to Tower 3 and try and get a good angle, see if he can see anything, because those rockets are going to be spawning, and what a vantage point this is. Grenade, sniper rifle, you're in the perfect spot. There he goes. He's going to drop down, trying to stay alive here. Two shots left in the chamber. He's going to find a player, get the melee, but that sniper is out. Rockets are coming up. Let's get an overhead look here and see which team is going to be able to retrieve these. You're going to see Falcade and make a move for it. He'll stay alive wow. after getting the double kill with the rocket. Still one more rocket left in the chamber. Looking for a player, looking for that easy kill. Any player pushing up, getting into a close range, will let him get that easy pick. So now he's going to make his way towards ring three, trying to spot anyone making a push. But it doesn't look like Lucid are giving him any type of opportunity. They're keeping their distance. They know he's got rockets ring two. The thing is, they're keeping their distance, but Elevator just pinging them off one by one with uh, their pistols here. And even SLG trying to escape, but he's just getting absolutely railed in the back. There is a seven kill lead now here for Elevator. And Lucid, they're trying to slow the game down. They're trying to get into a position where they can start to claw this one back kill by kill. But they are going to struggle because Elevator's aggression has been very clear throughout this game. They've been moving as a unit, they've been watching spawns well, and they've been making sure that they've been calling out and finishing off those kills, not allowing people to escape with their lives. And the ring two, ring three control by Falcated right now. And Elevate is just remarkable. Finally, Fa Falcated will be taken down by Respectful. We've seen SLG and Spartan, both with snipers. We're going to see a little bit of a standoff here. We're going to see who's going to come out on top. SLG versus Spartan. Spartan picks up a kill on Duke Foxy. He's looking across the map, but Spartan's going to take him down straight to the face for a double kill. I was saying I wanted to see those snipe offs. I wanted to see teams have those one-on-one -on -one battles with Spartan. It seems like having a sniper in your hands is a good scenario. Rockets coming up in 20 seconds, and look at Elevate. Repositioning themselves, taking the center of the map, making sure that Lucid don't have an easy route to get there. As yes, it's a shot in the kneecap, but it's a shot in the kneecap that gets the kill. Oh. And now they are running away with it no. here, Elevate. Again, not again. Seconds. Don't jump back out when you've got Spartan holding the sniper. That's two times, two for two. Spartan has punished a player for poking back out when he's got that sniper. Again, Elevate with another set of rockets. Again, 32 to 18. They are just taking control. Falcated with a sniper, picks up the double kill. Sabinator with rockets. It feels like Elevate are just in complete control of both snipers and rockets. And I was saying I would have loved to have seen a 48-48 Standoff, but well, Lucid are going to need to do something massive to even get there as Kimbo tries to sneak his way into ring two, but he gets greeted by a rocket in the backside. And now there is a sniper rifle for Lucid, but I feel like it's too late. There is so much for uh, control here for Elevate. And Lucid, they just need to try and maybe slow this game down, try and pick off a kill by kill, just like they're doing here. They've got some work to do, though. We're going to see two Foxy, one shot left in the chamber. He's going to back down, see if he can have a teammate. Yep, SLG will finish off L-Town. Going for the body shot. Not going to be able to keep Kimbo alive as he gets perfect kill by Falcated. Taking an overhead look. You'll see Elevate. They are spawning over in back blue rocks and back in red rocks. So Lucid, they're going to get they're going to get sandwiched right here in ring two. And all the players from Lucid here just getting taken down. Falcated trying to stay alive. Kimbo's got to back down though. Kimbo. Taking it slow. Anybody nearby to help him out? They are slowly kind of creeping back, but down by a good amount still. Yeah, I mean, there's still like 11 kills, 12 kills there. And what Lucid really want is they want to get control of ring. They want to get Elevate on the spawn trap like Elevate were doing to them earlier. But the big point earlier was Elevate won a 4v4 kind of scrim that happened right in the middle of the map. All four players of Lucid died. And that means they were all spawning at the same time, which allowed Elevate just to control spawn so comfortably. If Lucid can pick up these rockets that are spawning in 15 seconds, get their sniper and take out Elevate sniper, they might be able to make something happen. But look at this, Elevate just demolishing 
Lucid here in ring two, but look at this. Somehow, both players are able to stay alive at ring one. Elevate trying to just clear out ring two area, but Spartan the dog, he's gonna get that final, most likely the final set of rockets. Again, Elevate just continuously being ready for those rockets. And Elevate are just being a nuisance to Lucid at this point as well, just making sure they push into ring one to get those rockets. Spartan does use both just to get a kill, but at this point, every kill matters as Falcated has a sniper rifle. Oh. Respectful gets absolutely dumped on, and that's gonna be three kills just needed for Elevate now to go 2 0 up on one of Lucid's best game types in this series. Falcated just putting in some work right now. We're at 48 to 35. Two more kills to close it out. Spartan with the headshot, looking to get that double to make it that flashy finish. He's gonna go up to ring three, and right now, really nowhere to run, nowhere to hide if you're on Team Lucid. As Spartan, he is gunning for you. He's just gonna turn the corner, take down two Foxy, making that flashy finish. Elevate going up two to zero here in the series. Do you want to know the main difference in that game, Mike? Sniper rifle kills, 17 sniper, well, sorry, power weapon kills, 17 power weapon kills on the side of Elevate, only five on the side of Lucid. So your sniper rifle, your rockets, that is how Elevate just dominated that map. And I'm sorry for Lucid fans, I'm sorry for the Lucid boys, that they just weren't able to keep up with the speed that Elevate played that game. The rotations were perfect. Well, if let's let's take or actually let's talk about the power weapon kills here for both teams. On Elevate, we saw 17 power weapon kills. On Lucid, we saw only five. They more than tripled their power weapon kills. You're not listening to me, are you, Mike? I literally just said that. I, I actually it, did it's, not it's to okay. You. It's okay. It's okay. You were looking me in the eye. You were giving me the eyes, and I was well, like, it's every fine. time I'm looking at you, I'm always looking down. Where's your box, <laughs> dude? Where the heck is the box? You were looking over okay. my head. That's I was why. looking over your but head. But yeah, I was, I was intently looking over at the stats. And, the, uh, the sniper rifle yeah. kills were insane. You look at what Spartan was doing when he was grabbing the sniper rifle every single time. It was absolutely phenomenal. And now taking a 2-0 lead is such a statement going into the rest of the series. Yeah, and without a doubt, we're probably not going to get to see Oddball here in this series, but we'll get to see it later on. We'll get to see it later on, but uh, I'd say with Spartan, how he's sniping, with Elevate, yeah, constantly just being in control, uh, being their main focus of, yeah, getting rockets, being in control of ring one, ring two, just constantly keeping uh, Lucid at bay. Really, you, you could see the fear in Lucid. You could see they didn't really want to push out from the base. They didn't really want to push out from the shotgun. They, they were just hanging back too much. They, they needed to push more as a unit and, play a little bit more aggressive. Like I said, it was just that one moment in the middle of the game where uh, all four members of Lucid were taken down and Elevate were just able to get them on the spawn trap. Whereas on the other side, when Lucid got a little bit of control, they were only taking two or three members of Elevate down, which meant there was always that one person left who was just being a nuisance, who was just sneaking around, whether that be going into ring one, grabbing a rocket launcher, or just getting a back smack. It just ruined the flow of Lucid's game. They weren't able to control as much as they would have liked, and they fall. They're two and zero down, and we move into map number three. Is it possible? Can Lucid bring this back here? I mean, looking at those game types, I'd say Strongholds Plaza, yes, definitely. We can see a, uh, this being a map for Lucid. I mean, Game just, one was still close. It, it was, and they have been close game. Wow, well, Slayer Refuge, you mean? Well, we can, we can forget that one as European fans. But Strongholds Plaza has always been a good game type for the likes of Foxy, for the likes of Kimbo and Respectful. Every iteration of the kind of infused lineup that we've had that now has turned into Lucid have always been good at Stronghold game types in general. Strongholds Plaza statistically is a good game type for Lucid from their Grim results as well and from the 2Ks, but I just said that about Slayer Refuge. So you can see how sometimes the online statistics don't mean everything. Yeah, and definitely how these two teams match up definitely factors in a lot. They haven't played against each other. And uh, if you haven't typed in the code just yet, you saw where's the box? I don't know where the box is. I can't help Where's that it? I'm only five foot nine and you're six foot eleven or whatever the stupid height you are, Mike. Oh come on. You, you could bend down. If there's no box, have you ever thought about that? I'm, I'm keeping my good posture. I'm standing up straight. I, I can't go down. I can't go down. We could, uh... You, you know, quite literally can't stoop to my box level. Over is here? that what you're telling hey, me? we've got a sandbag. We could use two sandbags over here. But I then am. you're going to be incredibly heavy, and that's going to be... If we're playing a game, I don't know how much weight can Are you be carried a into, a, into a backpack. You're saying I wait on team. Well, game number three is going to be kicking off here. It's the last chance now for Lucid to get back into this series. It's going to be Strongholds Plaza. Active camouflages there on the map. Everyone's going to be trying to grab that one. Trying to get 100 points to win this game. 
Here we go. Let's kick it off with Sabinator of Elevate making his way over in towards the yard. He's going to pick up that plasma pistol. And uh, we'll also see Spartan get the camo as well, trying to stay alive. He'll get taken down. At least they did burn it. Lucid's not going to be able to get control of that. Two down go for Lucid. That's going to be two down as well for Elevate. L-Town trying to stay alive. He will spot a player by the stairs. Can he get that finish? He's going to opt to just stay alive, wait for Spartan the dog to come in. Finish off the kill, a trade one for one. L-Town pushing with the shotgun. Hello, sit down to Foxy. We're gonna be pushing up now with that plasma pistol. Double kill for L-Town as well. As you saw, the entire shield get drained by that plasma pistol. Just one, two, three, four. I believe that was like eight or nine shots there. Not something you see all the time. But now we're gonna see Elevate really start to take control because they have got a trip cap. Yeah, this is not looking good for Lucid, really. I mean, yes, okay, it's game number one of the tournament. Yes, we said they haven't had that much practice coming into the tournament, but it's teams like Elevate they need to be beating or at least be getting very close to beating if they want to be breaking into that top eight bracket, if they want to be a team to actually be respected in this tournament, but they are getting a flat out just destroyed at the moment. And well, that's going to be three down, right? As you're yeah. saying that, they're able to almost get four down. That's going to be though. four down for Elevate for just a moment. Can they finish off that bottom middle capture? You've got two players from Lucid. Yep, they're going to be able to finish that off, and now they're able to put a point on the board. Elevate, though, can continuously playing very aggressive against this Lucid squad. And the thing is, Lucid aren't even performing badly at this point. Elevate are just actually playing really well. Look at the speed that they are pushing from Stronghold to Stronghold to make everything just that little bit more difficult for Lucid. Keep an eye out for the camouflage. It's going to be up in about 20 seconds as well. See if teams are going to start to swarm into the middle to try and grab it. Some teams feel that camouflage is very important in this game type. Others don't feel like it's as important and might just watch it from a distance and try and burn it, for example. SLG taking it slow. He's going to check his back corner. Just make his way over here. Just letting the other team make the mistakes. Let Elevate push out here. But you're going to see Kimbo go down. Respectful go down as well. Two down for Lucid. And now Elevate, they're making their push. That camo gets burned. But Elevate are able to regain complete control here and get the capture at bottom mid. So not only were they total control down there, they were able to push down to bottom middle, grab bottom middle, and stop the camouflage being picked up as well, all in one swift motion really well calculated move from elevate they all made sure they were on the same wavelength they managed to push through blue and make sure they had one person to kind of take down anyone that was trying to flank them as well this is really really nice halo from elevate i'm very impressed over to falcated with the light rifle back it down he's gonna be one shot he'll not be able to survive he's actually gonna get stuck by respectful over to two foxy goes down bottom middle all players battling over bottom mid right now two go down for both sides we're going to see Sabinator go down as well as Elevate are still able to hold on to that bottom middle control. Spartan doing a great job at just staying alive, waiting for some teammates. He's not going to get spotted by the Lucid player, but oh no, he will get taken down once he had that one shot. And you know how I was saying in the Coliseum game in game one, I was like, oh, I'm really happy to see Lucid go 1-0 down because it might change their pace of the game. It's not been the same on Refuge, and it is not the same on Plaza either. Once you are behind and you are in this scenario where you're like 40 points, it can be difficult to claw back. However, that being said, a triple and now potentially another kill in the back for SLG as he's performing work. They're starting to get those points. They're starting to get back in the game. They need those individual plays from the players like SLG, from players like Respectful, if they're going to have any chance in this game. Sabinator jumping up top to the yellow pipes, getting some crossfire map, or some cross map fire here. Uh, now we're going to see two go down, SLG, two Foxy by the double kill from L-Town. Perfect time for Elevate to move in and regain control, and you'll see them quickly capitalize on this opportunity. They're picking up bottom mid and the trip cap on top of that. Respectful goes down, and we're going to see Camo pop here right now. We'll see which player is going to be able to get their hands on that. And no player really exactly ready for it, but Sabinator, he's able to come in and get it virtually almost untouched, but now he's going to get taken down to one shot, trying to stay alive, keep that advantage. Shotgun player goes down. Three go down for Lucid, and a big swing here for Elevate. And yet another scenario where Elevate are just executing their pushes perfectly around the power-up spawns. They were able to get total control, they were able to get three down for Lucid, just as the camouflage popped up, which meant there was only one member of Lucid to even try and stop the camouflage. And now Sabinator can just go to town, he can be a nuisance, he can hit these pistol shots, while the rest of Lucid have to worry about him after walking around any and every corner. He's always potentially waiting for them. What a great play, just staying alive and just being a nuisance. 
with that camo. He didn't need to engage into a fight. He didn't need to start a battle, and he just stayed alive, stayed behind the enemy team, and just got in so many shots behind them. And they're wondering, how the heck did this guy get behind us? Sabinator playing it absolutely perfect. He'll finally be taken down, but Elevate's still putting some points on the board. Lucid not too far behind, though. They are still in this. They have to win this game number three. This is a best of five. If Elevate take this one, this is game over for them in this series. It is only pool play at the end of the day. It's not the end of the world if Lucid do lose here, but you've got to look at who else is in the group. Lucid are going to really struggle against anyone else they might come up against. They will have an open team to potentially get a victory and try and get themselves a better seed going into the elimination bracket. But Splice is a tough match. Exactly, exactly. They are going to struggle against uh, Splice. And now they just need to try and get back into this game type by potentially maybe getting a camouflage, getting a shotgun, for example. I think Elevate have had every shotgun that spawned on this match and they've just been able to dominate those close encounters. Sabinator with the light rifle, looking across towards Flowers, able to get a few shots on Respectful, and you'll see Falcated get the cleanup kill. That light rifle definitely can be very damaging when zoomed in, bringing players down to no shields just in two shots. So Sabinator again picking up another camouflage, untouched this time, absolutely unseen, and now just kill after kill. Look at the kill feed. Three go down for Elevate, Sabinator, Light Rifle, and Camo. You've got L-Town with the Plasma Pistol. Another kill for Sabinator. Taking down two Foxy, make it an even another kill. And you're going to see some body disrespect. There. And you are, and it's going to be the game as well for Elevate. I don't think Lucid have a chance to get back into this. They're trying desperately to push to Nest. But it is going to be a 3-0 victory in this series. Where did Lucid go in those last 20 seconds? The camouflage was spawning, and I didn't see any sort of interaction with the map. I didn't see here any movement on the map. It's like they were trying to plan some push. It was thwarted right at the last second. Elevate looking really strong this tournament. A disappointing game, though, for the side of Lucid. They will definitely want to pick things up in their next series. Yeah, without a doubt. And like you said, this is just full play, so uh, they still can bring it back. But if you're on the Elevate side, you're feeling pretty good. You're feeling like, hey, we put in that time, we put in the practice, it's paying off right now. Because a lot of people looked at this matchup today, and they were thinking this was going to be one of the best matches, uh, excuse me, best matchups of the day that both teams kind of play against each other pretty well. You've got the number one European team against uh, the top four uh, NA team. So I, it, I don't want to say it was disappointing because Elevate played really well. And actually, it was a nice demonstration of how to play three of those maps in Halo 5. However, it was disappointing from the side of a European fan or a Lucid in general. I'm sure they won't be happy with how they played that. They know that they can play better, but it feels like I'm repeating myself event after event when it comes to these European teams, Mike. I know they can perform better, but when it comes to the big stage, they do seem to let themselves down in some of these games. Well, Spartan definitely wasn't letting anybody down there with those snipe shots we saw time and time again on Refuge. What map is that? A Refuge. It's a remake of a Halo 2 map, popular remake one. Remake of a Halo yeah. 2 map, okay. Uh-huh. All right. All right. Which map is that? Let us know. Just let us know. Statistically, though, that was a really strong game from Elevate. Look at the amount of kills there for Sabinator. I said he was the man that they were constantly worrying about. He was flanking around, doing a little flanker doodle here, there, and everywhere. And he was able to pick up 22 kills and only eight deaths as well. But SLG, he gave it a good game. We saw that triple kill that he pulled out as well. Almost the over. Oh, so close. It was just the time gap, the time difference. And we need to see more of that. And I that think, damage course. output that he was putting there, 2,446 damage output, putting in some big, big numbers for his team playing big. Well, that's going to do it for us here. Dan and I will be back later. Lottie, take it away. Thank you so much, Strongside and Gaskin. Guys, we asked for a good game, and that is exactly what they gave us. It's unfortunate for Lucid, who lost out there, but Elevate just with a better team at the time. I just want to say a big welcome to Walshy, who's joining me on the desk as well. Thank Walshie, you for having me. how are me. you today? I'm doing well, doing well. Usually, Gold Boy gives me flack and all that stuff. <laughs> I love that you're professional and respectful. I appreciate it. Obviously, nothing but the best for my fellow analysts. Um, gentlemen, <laughs> What did you make of the game? Was it everything that you imagined it to be? Elamite, what did you think? No, it really wasn't. I was <laughs> expecting way more from Lucid. They honestly did not seem like this was the best Europe to have has to offer. Honestly, I did not think they were better than the previous infused roster. Uh, I was actually extremely disappointed and impressed by Elevate. 
Uh, so there are some good stories to come out of that as well. Spartan clearly stepping up and not making a name, or not making a name for himself, but you know having a dominant performance in that series. Now he's never really struggled against the lower seeded teams. It's only when he hits like the top two, top three teams does he start to kind of run into that wall. But clearly, what he's been doing has not affected him too much, and this elevated roster is strong. Fellas, let's break this down map by map because everyone at home wants to know what you guys thought. Of course, as they do. Uh, let's have a look at map number one. This is CTF on a Coliseum, a uh, favorite map of mine, actually. Um, what, what did you think of this clutch? Uh, I felt like Lucid, this is actually the, one of the few times where they did uh, they did well. They uh, they made it to 2-2 halfway through the game or so. So at some point, we're like, all right, they can they can hang with Elevate. They were looking prime to actually take the, the win when they were up 2-1 in flag. But obviously fell short. It just felt like once Elevate started to get that second flag in, second half of the game, uh, it started to fall apart. Right, Elevate just really took over uh, towards the end of this game. They were making the plays. You saw Lucid make a couple of caps in this game, and they were very efficient flag caps. When I say that, I mean like they didn't have to slay Elevate multiple times to get these caps. They got them dead while they were running it and were able to cap it. So good job by Lucid there, but Elevate slaying power and their power weapons became too strong. And the power-ups, too. I mean, how many did Lucid have in that last game? I think you know, one, maybe, maybe oh, zero? Oh, no. Throughout the entire series, it was like, even on set, we're about to hop in on Sank, and you're going to see Elevate get every set of rockets, control ring two the entire time. I mean, it was just textbook Sank Slayer done by Elevate, and, and there was nothing Lucid could do. I mean, when you're playing against players with better weapons than you, you're, you're kind of screwed. Clutch, the next map we had, Slayer on Refuge. Now, how important was it for the power weapons to be control 